Hey guys, welcome back to Flix Recap. My name is Luke Pelletier, and today we're gonna talk about something a little bit darker. Brace yourselves, and big content warning, because this is the 2019 thriller, Midsummer. Before we start, be sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and of course, subscribe to Flix Recap if you dig the commentary. And, as a disclaimer, this video includes my own personal commentary and analysis. It's not a substitute for the film itself. Links to purchase the film are in the description below. Buckle in, and let's do it. As the movie starts, we see a girl named Danny calling her parents after she receives a scary email from her sister. At the same time, we see that the parents are completely passed out, and all her calls are going straight to voicemail. We then see Danny looking at the email where her sister Terry has written that she's done, and so are their parents, and it's time to say goodbye now. Danny then frantically calls her boyfriend, Christian, who's sitting with his friends at a bar. During her conversation with Christian, we find out that Danny's sister suffers from a bipolar disorder, and Christian says she just sent the email to seek attention and that everything would be okay. Danny calls another friend of hers and tells her friend that she can sense the relationship is just a drag and that Christian's probably looking towards ending it sometime soon. In between her rants, she gets a call from another number and the scene changes and we see Christian with his friends as he's discussing now how he wishes to end the relationship and his friend Mark tells him how it's high time and that he should actually do so since Danny needs help. Like real help. Christian gets a call from Danny again and Danny cries hysterically on the phone and her cries are so agonizing that it sends a chill down my spine. It turns out that Terry has indeed killed herself and her parents through an elaborate carbon monoxide poisoning as the firefighters investigate what's going on. Christian eventually goes and consoles Danny since she's continuing to cry with hysteria. Yeah, this is like, uh, this does not bode well for the rest of the movie, I promise you. In the next scene, we see a very distraught Danny as she accompanies Christian to a party where he's supposed to meet his friends. There, we find out Christian has a friend named Pele who has a Swedish ancestry. And since another friend named Josh needs to go to Sweden for a thesis, he asked all of his friends, including Christian, to come along on Pele's invitation. When the couple comes back home, Danny confronts Christian for not telling her about the trip, and Christian is left with no answer to give her. We can tell, since she's not super mad, that she's not really willing to lose somebody over her own discomfort. Crazy separation issues. Next day, Christian tells his friends that he invited Danny to come with them, but Christian's friends are visibly awkward about it. Later, Danny comes over to the apartment to hang out with Christian's friends, and while the others are super awkward around her, Pele talks to Danny about how he's majoring in anthropology, just like Josh and Christian. He also tells Danny about the community that he's from, and shows her some pictures, and Danny gets mesmerized. In the next scene, we see all of them are actually off to Sweden. When they all reach Sweden on the way to the commune, Pele introduces the group to his brother and his friends Simon and Connie from England. Pele's brother gives everyone magic mushrooms, but Danny's a little hesitant to take them, and Mark is very visibly annoyed by her. Mark, while high, realizes what the midnight sun is and he freaks out since it's daylight at 9pm. Danny has a really bad trip and she starts seeing her family. She also gets really conscious about the people around her laughing at her. They make their way to the commune and it looks serene. They have their midsummer festival which happens every 90 years. The people look as peaceful as they could possibly be. In the next scene we see a couple of children playing. One of the local Swedish girls and also Pele's sister has a crush on Christian and tries flirting with him. Pele takes everyone to where they would be staying and it's a beautiful place. As they're about to sleep, Pele tells them that the first ceremony is Atestupa, which is the next day, and it's supposed to be scary. He previously tells them, more like casually mentions, that at the age of 72, every elder is supposed to be dispatched from the community. But he doesn't elaborate on how they're supposed to be dispatched or what that really means. The next day, everyone has food together and suddenly the two most elderly people get up and start a weird ritual where they hum and make strange blowing noises. The two of them are picked up along with their chairs and are carried to the top of a cliff. The only person to stay behind is Mark, as he's not really interested. Alright, if you've made it this far, you're kicking back and enjoying the video. 
now would be a great time to subscribe to Flix Recap. Subscribing is absolutely free, and it helps me bring you even more dope content. Okay, plug over. Back to the recap. On the cliff, the two of the most elderly people from earlier fulfill a ritual by marking their blood on a stone. And then the woman jumps off the cliff and falls to her demise. The horror from the guests ruins the mood and completely taints the ritual, so that when the man jumps off, he survives, and everyone around him eerily mimics his pain and moans as a way to empathize and stay on the same wavelength. Then, arguably one of the most gruesome scenes in this entire godforsaken movie, the man is put out of his misery with a mallet. Everyone, including Danny, watches in absolute horror. This is not how the ritual is supposed to go. The elders are supposed to be in command of when they take their own lives. Oh, oh, oh my god. The sounds that his skull makes from being crushed are auditorily scarring. In the next scene, Christian goes to Josh and tells him that he wants to do his thesis on the same topic and they start arguing. Christian tells Josh he's made up his mind and he walks away. On the other hand, Danny's having a breakdown after seeing two people lose their lives. And just as Danny's convinced that she wants to leave, Pele convinces her otherwise and asks her to stay. The bodies from earlier are set on fire in front of the entire crowd. Later that night, as everyone is asleep, Danny watches Mark as he's lured outside by a local woman, and he's taken away in a car, or so she thinks that everyone has left her behind. Danny even sees her dead family members, and turns out it was a nightmare due to the sleeping pill she took from Josh earlier that night. Meanwhile, Maja slips something under Christian's bed. The next day, it turns out Mark is very much well, and Pele tells Christian that Maja has a thing for him. At the same time, Mark goes ahead and accidentally pees on a sacred tree, and the locals lose it with anger. It also turns out that Simon has left the place and has left Connie behind. Later, as everyone is having food again, Maya gives Christian a meat pie with her womanly follicle in it. Ugh, this nasty way of not only showing interest, but actually performing magic and putting a spell on Christian to be attracted to her. One of the women from earlier comes and lures Mark away. Later that night, Josh sneaks into the room where they keep their sacred book and tries reading it, but he's caught by someone wearing a mask made out of Mark's skinned face, and he's hit in the head till his last breath. And we find out Mark is also probably dead because of him taking a piss on the sacred tree. The next day, Danny and Christian are given drinks that make them hallucinate, and Danny takes part in this dancing ritual along with all the other women. In the ritual, as Danny's the last woman to keep dancing, she's crowned as the May Queen for the local people. She's then taken to a feast where she's seated as the Queen. In the middle of the feast, Maya gets up and she signals Christian to follow her as Christian is still hallucinating. Meanwhile, Danny is taken away on a carriage, and Christian sits there in utter confusion. Christian is then directed to a barn where there are surprisingly a lot of naked women, and in the middle lies Maya who's waiting to be impregnated by Christian. As Christian's in the process of mating, all the women standing around start mimicking Maya's moans. This weirdly sexual, empathetic ritual. Christian, I don't even know if he knows what to make sense of since he's just seems like he's completely in a trance. Danny arrives and despite being told not to, goes to see what Christian's up to and she's heartbroken. She begins hysterically crying again, and she's backed up by other women amongst the locals who help her channel out her sadness by mimicking her cries. Christian runs out as soon as he realizes that they're all being used for some sick ritual, and as he's running around, he starts finding everyone who's lost their lives. He first sees Josh's legs sticking outside the ground, and then he sees Simon's body suspended by threads piercing through his body, his back flayed, and his eyes gouged out and replaced by sunflowers. One of the senior members of the community knocks Christian out using a powder, and as soon as he wakes up, Christian is told that he can't speak or move. Not that he shouldn't, but that he physically cannot. It turns out that according to their beliefs, in order to get rid of the evils in their society, they must honor the gods by sacrificing a total of nine people. Four had to be people from their own community, four had to be people outside their community, and the last person to be sacrificed had to be chosen by the May Queen, which is Danny herself. 
It turns out that it was all an elaborate plan and Pele was supposed to bring everyone to his commune. Pele's brother and one other man decide to volunteer themselves to die. As per Danny's decision, she has to choose between Christian and one of the locals for the final person to die. After quite some thinking and crying, Danny decides it should be Christian who should be the last sacrifice. The local members of the commune kill a brown bear and they disembowel it enough to make room for a human. They then take Christian and stuff him inside the bear. And using a wheelchair, they take him into a barn. Inside the barn, the locals have already gathered all the bodies, which have been decorated in strange ways, with hay and flowers coming out of their noses and their mouths and eyes. The entire barn is then set on fire in front of Danny's eyes as she finally watches herself get out of her toxic relationship and watches Christian as he burns to death, unable to speak or even scream, which makes the situation 10 times more eerie. Everyone outside mimics the screams of the people who were alive inside being burned alive and Danny still watches, first in absolute agony and sadness, but then slowly her frowns turn into a chilling grin as she watches the last fabrics of her sanity disappear and realizes that Christian is no more. Danny finally gives in to her insanity as she smiles and that's where the movie abruptly ends. I love the imagery and I love the story it's trying to tell about a relationship that needs to end that isn't helpful and that simply must be burned. But my god, my god, probably one of the most unsettling, if not the most unsettling movie I have seen in like the past 10 years, bar none. And even if you're listening now and still haven't seen the movie, don't let the recap be the end of it. The movie itself is just that disturbing. Highly recommend for anybody who's in for a very good scare. But what did y'all think? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next recap. Until next time.